Hey guys, welcome back to Russ News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there is a ton of news stories to get into today. So let's get straight into today's stories and let's talk about Selena Vega because Selena Vega made her big return last night, of course, on Friday Night SmackDown. She was released by the company last year. Now, it's a really interesting story just how these things work out because... It was about an hour or so, a couple of hours or so before the show SmackDown went on the air. A report came out from Fightful Select, basically, without confirming that Zelina Vega was going to be appearing on the show, said there was an update about her future. Now, this is fascinating. So, this is the report that Fightful Select said. It's talking about having um, updates about her future with the company, what she was going to be doing in the company, that kind of stuff. And then, wouldn't you know it, after this report comes out, again, it's just funny how this stuff works. After this report comes out, subsequently, subsequently she shows up on the show. And you sort of just go, oh, uh, <laughs> okay. So this was the report that it said, um, in an update on Selena Vega's status uh, with WWE, sources tell us that the plan as of three weeks ago was for Zelina to return to the WWE main roster. Zelina was uh, listed on internal documents in June as a female heel on the SmackDown roster, although she didn't appear at all that month in the company. We aren't able to confirm specific creative plans for Zelina, but we're told that as of the time she was added to the roster, the hope was to have her involved by the time Money in the Bank rolled around, and even possibly involved in the match. Then, of course, uh, in an update since they published this, they're told that the plan was to have her return uh, immediately. They've heard no update on Alistair Black and what his plans are, but plans could change as they always tend to do. So that's just fascinating. Again, that they post that out saying, just FYI, this is what we'd last heard about Selena Vega. We don't know what's going to happen, what's going to, all that kind of stuff. And wouldn't you know, it, she, she shows up on SmackDown. Now, I'm not indicating that they're listening to Fight for Select or anything like that. It's just Talk about coincidences. It's, it's coincidences. It is just, it's crazy, isn't it? Nevertheless, Selena Vega has indeed returned to WWE. Last night's edition of SmackDown on Fox saw Sonya Deville bring Vega back, introducing her as the next blue brand entrant into the woman's Money in the Bank ladder match. Now, Vega, of course, was playing a heel cut a promo on the mic about how she will win the Money in the Bank ladder match, then cash in to become either the Raw, SmackDown, or NXT Women's Champion. Interesting that they mentioned NXT there as well. She was then interrupted by Liv Morgan, who was still upset about not getting a Money in the Bank ladder match spot, whilst Carmella and Vega has. One would think that Liv Morgan is going to eventually be added to that match. Morgan ended up having words with Vega and then slapped her. Morgan begged for a match, and Sonya Deville granted it. The match didn't last that long, to be honest with you, and it ended after the referee caught Selena Vega trying to roll Morgan up with a handful of tights. Morgan took advantage of the distraction and then used a handful of tights herself to roll Vega up for the victory. Uh, Vega was seething at the loss and tried to go after Liv Morgan after the match, but the referee stopped her. Now, of course, this is Vega's first appearance on WWE television since late 2020 when she was released by the company following issues with the company over their new third-party edict. It was recently revealed that the company was indeed bringing her back a few weeks before her husband, Alistair Black, was released on June 2nd as part of the budget cuts that we've seen caused the release of several WWE talents and employees over the course of the last few months. Vega has focused on acting and video game streaming since leaving WWE but has not worked with any other professional wrestling promotion she was rumored to be headed to AEW at one point, but of course, nothing came for those rumors. Now, it's obviously a very big story, a really big story. And Zelina Vega herself has uh, commented on this. She tweeted out, quote, what, I, uh, what to take from tonight? I'm back. I'm going to win a money in the bank ladder match, dot, dot, and I will win, period. Everything else is irrelevant. So that's what Zelina Vega has had to say regarding her return to WWE. Now, I saw a lot of contrasting takes on this on social media, as you want, as one would expect to see on social media, because that's just what it is nowadays. It is not about opinion. It's about hot takes. And if people disagree with you, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. How dare you? You're wrong. That's social media nowadays. If you've got a, an opinion that's different to mine, how dare you? How dare you have an opinion that's different to mine? When it comes to Zelina Vega, I've seen a lot of people saying, oh, she's gone back on a word. I can't believe she went back on a word. She tweets that she supports unionization and eventually she signs back with WWE. This was the same kind of outrage that we saw when she, when the first rumors came that she had re-signed with the company a, a couple of months ago, whenever that report first came out. And, and my feeling was at the time, don't blame Zelina Vega. Don't blame Zelina Vega. If we're going to blame Zelina Vega for re-signing with the WWE, we should also blame ourselves here. Because once again, and it's the same pattern we've seen time and time again over history when it comes to WWE, this third party edict, all that kind of stuff. Unionization, independent contractors, that whole sort of dirty underbelly 
of pro wrestling that us fans don't like to talk about. We don't like to talk about the wrestlers don't get benefits. We don't like to talk about that the wrestlers don't have health insurance. We don't like to talk about there are these aspects of pro wrestling we don't like to talk about as fans, whether it's the concussion problem, whether it's the painkiller problem that we've seen in pro wrestling, whether it's the premature deaths and all that kind of stuff. We don't like to talk about that. When it comes to unionization, we don't like to talk about that because the reason why Zelina Vega ultimately has re-signed with WWE is because, not that she doesn't have a choice, but people have moved on. And when it comes to this unionization issue in pro wrestling, every time it rears its head and every time we think there's going to be a, there's going to be a real push for change, finally... These pro wrestlers are going to become a part of a union. Finally, they're going to be involved in SAG. And finally, they're going to get health insurance. And they're going to have their trans paid for. And they're going to be have their food paid for on the road. And they're going to be treated like actual employees because they are. They're just listed as independent contractors. So WWE doesn't have to shell out a ton of money for them. Where in reality, they're, they're, they're employees, but they're not treated as... Em- it's just it's madness. The issue is, is once again, once the issue came up, people got angry, people got outraged, and they said there needs to be change, there needs to be reform, and what happened? Everyone moved on. Because that's what happens every single time. Every single time this issue comes up, we get angry, we get outraged, we tweet, we blog, we do videos like this, and then what happens? A couple months down the line, we find something else to be angry about, and people move on. It was it Andrew Yang? He's going out going, well, I'll tell you what, when the when the Joe Biden administration gets voted in, phew, I'm going to be having words. And Vince McMahon and the WWE, they're not going to want to have, they've stepped out of line this time. They've gone too far. They're going to pay for this. Don't you worry. If I'm not in charge or I know someone that is in charge, well, Vince McMahon, he better be worried. Several months later, nothing's happened. And because that's what happens, people move on. It's politics. It's people knowing what's in the media's eye at that time. It's knowing what people are talking about at that period of time. And then suddenly a new subject comes up, a new conversation comes up and people move on. People aren't talking about unionization and pro wrestling anymore. They're talking about something else because that's how the news cycle works. So if we're going to be angry at Zelina Vega and say, I can't believe she re-signed with WWE. How dare she re-sign with WWE? How dare she go back and make money and work in the industry that she obviously loves? You know, what we expect her not to move on, but everyone else is allowed to move on? That doesn't really seem fair. Because if we're going to get angry at Zelina Vega for re-signing with a company that doesn't support unionization, we should also be angry at ourselves because we've moved on. We've moved on and start, uh, started talking about different subjects. And now we're calling Zelina Vega a hypocrite. Maybe we should take a closer look at ourselves. Maybe we're the hypocrites because we're the same people that are saying, yes, yes, there should be a union. There should be a union. Oh, wait, what's this different subject? Union what? Oh, I don't care about unions anymore. That's how it works. So if you're going to get angry as Zelina Vega, maybe you should be angry at yourself first. Now, when it comes to the booking last night, you could be angry at that. You could be angry at that. Zelina Vega returns and what happens in her first night back? She loses. Hmm. You could certainly certainly look into the politics of that one of, yeah, okay, we'll bring you back. But by the way, don't step out of your lane next time. Maybe that's what they're like. That, that's, maybe that's what that was last night. I don't know. I think there's a story being told of Liv Morgan, obviously. Good. There should be. She's an incredibly talented person. And obviously, she's got a huge amount of support. Uh, on social media and with the fans when they return they'll be behind her and it's highly likely she gets added to that match does she win it i don't know i I can't answer that one but i think it's highly likely she gets added to the match when people are saying about the whole alistair black scenario personally i don't see alistair black returning there's been a lot of a lot of conversation hasn't there right now a lot of conversation about him already of uh, basically of agreeing something with AEW, and the chances are the reports are indicating that he will go to AEW. Again, whether whether that happens, time will only tell. I think it's just, uh, you know, it's the wrong timing, isn't it? Selena Vega returns and then suddenly Alistair Black gets fired. I don't think there's anything that premeditated about that, to be honest. Again, I know people will look into that and say, oh, they got her back and then they fired her husband. How dare WWE? I genuinely think, and this is what we've heard from about Nick Khan recently, is he is looking at numbers on the paper. He is looking at numbers. He's looking at salaries. He's looking at contracts. He doesn't care. If you're married, engaged, partners, whatever, he just sees dollars and cents and he sees people that he doesn't think are worth the value of the contract that they have and all he cares about is increasing profits right now. He don't care about marriages. So I don't think it's that premeditated at all. I think it's just Nick Khan looking at, yep, too much money, get rid. I don't think it has anything to do with Zelina Vega and Tommy End. 
Tommy End reportedly has come out and said, no, I'm not going back to WWE. I think it was part of my journey. I think he's going to AEW, and I think a lot of people do as well. So uh, great to see Zelina Vega back. Great to see her doing what she loves to do. And those people that are insistent, shall we say, on, on attacking for Zelina Vega for returning, calling her a hypocrite and all that, again, have a better look at yourself first. That would be my advice there. Now, speaking of SmackDown last night, we had some more matches announced for Money in the Bank. Of course, coming up in a couple weeks' time. One being the Bailey versus Bianca Belair feud, which apparently will never die. It will never die. It will never end. Because the feud between Bailey and SmackDown Women's Champion Bianca Belair is set to wrap up at the WWE Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Last night, SmackDown on Fox featured a face-off segment between the two rivals. Belair then challenged uh, Bailey to an I Quit match at the pay-per-view. And Bailey accepted. Of course, the SmackDown Women's Championship will be on the line. Of course, this will be their third match. Belair retained over Bailey at WrestleMania Backlash. She then defeated her at Hell in a Cell as well, as well inside Hell in a Cell 2. So, look... I have no doubt this match will be good. The match at WrestleMania Backlash was good. The match inside Hell in the Cell was better than good uh, at, uh, at Hell in the Cell. And the I Quit match, sure, I'm sure it'll be great. But it's the same kind of scenario as Drew McIntyre heading into Hell in the Cell, isn't it? Of people are going, wait a minute, Bailey lost twice. And it's even worse than the Drew McIntyre situation of she lost at WrestleMania Backlash. You can start talking about, well, you know, the hair and she, Bianca Bella used the hair and Bailey said she, she she cheated and all that kind of stuff. So you go, well, okay, I can understand the, the, the reason to do another match. You've put a, an element of doubt in there. You've put, a, you've put a seed of dissent of, oh, well, maybe, maybe deserves another match because that was a controversial fashion that, that Bianca Belair won. Okay, I totally understand that one. But money in, the, money in the Bank shouldn't really even be happening because Hell in a Cell, that's how you end a feud. That is a feud-ending match. And it just goes to show how much Hell in a Cell doesn't matter anymore. That match used to be, you know, before here, having a pay view and the concept just being killed off completely... Before that, if you had a Hell in the Cell match, that was the end of the feud. That was the brutal match. There was blood. There was violence. There was everything. That ended the feud. And now it's now it's a middle feud match. Because surely that has an element of finality to it, right? It's two guys, or females in this instance, inside Hell in the Cell. They can't get out. Bianca Belair beat Bailey. No strings attached. No controversy. No nothing. She just beat her. KOD was it onto a ladder or something like that. Onto whatever it was. She beat her. End of. And now Bianca Belair's going, I want to make you quit. I quit. I'm like, what? <laughs> Why? And again, it's this weird, they have to find a way to justify Bailey having another match. And they can't really. They can't in Storyline because there isn't one. There isn't a logical explanation for it. Now, I don't blame Bailey or Bianca Belair because the match is going to be very good. The match is going to be very good because their matches, all of them, have been very good. The reason... Well, we've got Bianca Belair versus Bailey three this time in an I Quit match. It's because they've got no one else. <laughs> they've got no one else. Not in terms of, oh, there's no one that can step into that match. Physically, they've got no one else on that brand they can put into that match right now because they released most of them. They fired most of them. So it's kind of like we've got Bianca Belair versus Bailey because they're the only two females left. The rest of the females on the SmackDown roster are in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Sasha Banks is off. She's going to come back soon because it's going to be Belair versus Banks at SummerSlam. Again, we know that because that was the WrestleMania match too. There aren't many people left. So they've kind of backed themselves into a corner. And that's what WWE does with this kind of stuff. They back themselves into a corner where no logic can get them out. And they just have to have the babyface go, well, I want to be a good babyface champion. So I'm going to face you once again, this time in an I quit match. You're the bully that I had to deal with as I was growing up. And this time I'm going to make you quit. And she will. She'll win because she's facing Sasha Banks at SummerSlam. But there is just no logic here. And this is one of just the biggest problems with WWE programming for the last however many months, is just this constant, this constant, we don't have anything else. <laughs> we don't have anything else. So we're going to have to just do something else. We're going to have to do it again. Let's run it back because we've got nothing. We've got nothing else. And it's just, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. 
Uh, let's talk about NXT because last night saw some more NXT stars compete in dark matches before Friday Night SmackDown. WWE NXT superstars were brought to SmackDown once again this week as officials try to get a better look of uh, a better look at them rather ahead of potential main roster call-ups. Now NXT champion Karrion Cross, Tony Storm, Shotzi Blackheart, and Odyssey Jones were all brought to last night's SmackDown on Fox tapings. This is according to a report by PW Insider. Dark matches scheduled for officials include Cross versus Cesaro, Jones versus Robert Roode, and Storm versus Blackheart. Now, if you're not familiar with Odyssey Jones, you can see him there on the screen. Jones is Amari Palmer, a former college football player who was signed in the same February 2019 Performance Center class that included Bronson Reed, uh, Karen Q, Rachel Ellering, Jordan Mars, Cameron Grimes, Everise, Dexter Loomis, Nick Comorato, Brendan Vink, and Ricardo Miller. Jones made his NXT in-ring debut at a November 2019 live event, losing to Loomis. He only worked five NXT live event matches before the COVID-19 pandemic hit in early 2020 losing his first three matches to Loomis and losing his second match to Vink, losing his fourth to Killian Dane and then defeated Mohamed uh, Fahim in his last match. Now, as has been previously noted here, Cross, Scarlett, Blackheart, and Reed have all been brought up to recent Raw and SmackDown television shows to wrestle for officials. Cross wrestled Dolph Ziggler at SmackDown three weeks ago, and Reed wrestled Rude at the same night. They were then brought to Raw the next week to work WWE main event TV, uh, TV tapings, where Cross defeated Shouted Benjamin, and Reed defeated Drew Gulak. Scarlett and Blackheart then wrestled each other at SmackDown that week, while Cross wrestled Slapjack. Cross, Scarlett, and Blackheart were brought back to Raw this past Monday, but there's no word yet on who they wrestled. So obviously, we're seeing the the next step, shall we say, of all of this discussion about what NXT stars are going to be coming up to the main roster soon. The answer is a lot. I think it's pretty much almost certain at this point, Karrion Cross and Scarlett are coming up. We just don't know if they're going to be a pair or not. Again, same with Bronson Reed, probably the indicator that he's coming up. Again, Shotzi Blackheart, I guess the feeling that she's going to be coming up. I wouldn't be surprised if we see her on SmackDown again. Same with Tony Storm. And the answer is very simple as to why, because they've got no body. They've got no body. So they need females on SmackDown. So Shotzi Blackheart, Tony Storm, maybe even Scarlett. I don't know how that works as, her, as a singles, as a wrestler, because I think she's better with Karrion Cross. Vince McMahon might see her as the star, but... Time will tell when it comes to that one. And, and again, when it's Odyssey, Odyssey Jones or whoever, names are going to be coming up. The reason why, WWE doesn't have a lot of names right now. So they're looking at a big refresh, and this is just the next step in that, I guess. Now, speaking of SmackDown, going back to SmackDown, we have some matches confirmed for SmackDown next week because WWE will finalize the lineup for the Men's Money in the Bank ladder match on next Friday's SmackDown episode. WWE has announced that next Friday, SmackDown will feature the last two Money in the Bank qualifying matches for the men's division with Baron Corbin versus King Shinsuke Nakamura plus Cesaro versus Seth Rollins. Now, this feud for both guys has been going on forever in SmackDown the last few months and now will be used to determine the final two blue brand spots for the Money in the Bank ladder match. Last night, SmackDown also featured Kevin Owens defeating Sami Zayn in a last man standing match to qualify as well. Big E previously qualified. The raw side of the eight man match is made up of Ricochet, Riddle, John Morrison and Drew McIntyre. Now, WWE, of course, may end up finalizing the women's Money in the Bank ladder match, uh, match next week as well, but nothing has been announced. As I mentioned, Sonya Deville placed a returning Zelina Vega in the match on last night's show as she did with Carmella last week. Liv Morgan continues to make a case why she should have a spot in the match, and uh, I think she probably will get it. But even if she does, that leaves just one blue brand spot for the women's division in that match. Could be Sasha Banks, maybe, as well. The raw side of uh, the match has uh, Asuka, Naomi, Alexa Bliss, and Nikki Cross already confirmed. So if I'm going to pick who wins that out of uh, those matches next week, that's a tough one. I would probably say Nakamura wins to continue the storyline of King Corbin or Baron Corbin rather than not being happy. And his losing streak will continue, which eventually will turn him happy. Cesaro and Rollins. Difficult. Difficult one. Um, I would I would prefer Cesaro to win because I would prefer Cesaro to win the whole match in general, but I don't think he will. I think Drew McIntyre wins the match. I would like to see, again, Cesaro win so he could win it and then hold the briefcase for... You know, nine months or whatever, and eventually win the championship. I think that's a great story of someone that's generated quite a lot of momentum this year. Maybe Cesaro wins and it continues Rollins' descent into madness, and he blames Edge for it. I could also see Rollins winning, winning the briefcase, trying to cash in on 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 Reigns and Edge at say Money in the Bank, and then losing because of Edge, 
And then that, again, that continues their match for SummerSlam. So there's a lot of different avenues there. That's a difficult one to predict. It truly is. Logic for me would say Cesaro, because Rollins will be involved in Money in the Bank. Because I think he get involved. I think he gets involved in the Edge and Reigns match anyway. But that's a it's a compelling match next week, and it's uh, exciting for Money in the Bank. Uh, we have an update when it comes to Mercedes Martinez. Of course, she uh, looked to have suffered a stinger a, a, or was knocked out or whatever this past week on NXT. And she has reportedly suffered a concussion. As previously noted, um, Martinez was legitimately knocked out during Tuesday's mixed tag team match, which saw Zia Lee defeat Amboa, defeat Mercedes and Jake Atlas. Uh, Lee delivered a roundhouse kick to Martinez, which knocked her out and caused some blood to come from her mouth. Martinez immediately went down and the referee stopped the match. Lee and Boa won the match due to referee referee stoppage and the finish was reportedly a shoot martinez was taken to a local hospital for further evaluation but was said to be doing better by wednesday morning it was noted on the wrestling observer radio show that martinez suffered a concussion from the kick there's no word yet on how long it might be before martinez is medically cleared to compete but she'll likely be out the ring for a couple of weeks if not longer martinez has not commented on what happened as of writing right now but has retweeted a few clips and tweets from the match so fingers crossed it's not nothing too serious and the concussions are no joke I know I've spoken about the whole chair shots to the head thing in AEW recently. And again, the backlash from that, I just can't believe. Uh, people are going, oh, don't worry about it. Concussions are real. Head injuries are very real. And we've come way too far. I and mean, we know too much about them at this point to be saying, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. She got knocked out. She was unconscious from a kick to the head. You know, of course, that, that's a serious injury. So fingers crossed it's nothing too bad. And hopefully she can uh, be back in a couple of weeks. Finally, we have some confirmation on the next guest for Steve Austin's Broken Skull Sessions. And this one looks to be a good one because the next episode of the Broken Skull Sessions on Peacock and the WWE Network will feature WWE Hall of Famer Kevin Nash. It was revealed yesterday via WWE Network News that Nash will sit down with the WWE Hall of Famer Stone Cold Steve Austin on Sunday, July 11. This will be Nash's first appearance on the Broken Skull Sessions. The official synopsis reads like this, quote, Steve Austin and two-time WWE Hall of Famer Kevin Nash discuss everything from Big Daddy Cool to The Click to the NWO and the Monday Night War, as well as the never-heard-before road stories. Austin has interviewed the likes of The Godfather back in May, of course, he's a WWE Hall of Famer, WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley in June, Chris Jericho, The Undertaker, the list goes on and on, Kurt Angle, Bret Hart and Kane, and all of these guys on the Broken Skull Sessions. Kevin Nash is a great interview. He is a great interview. Some of my favorite shoot interviews of all time, Kevin Nash interviews because he's incredibly entertaining. He's got a great recall and he's got a real great way of telling stories in interviews. Him and Steve Austin, Nash and Austin, that are legitimately really good friends. If you've ever listened to any podcast that Austin's done with Nash in the past, they're excellent and they drink a lot of wine <laughs> during their interviews. And I'm sure given that this is a studio at Steve Austin's home and they're good friends, I'd be stunned if they don't um, crack open a bottle of wine there as well. So, you know, hopefully we have a really good episode. I think they will again kevin ash is incredibly entertaining in any interview that he does so i'm very excited for that but look guys as always it's just one man's opinion what are your thoughts on all of these wwe news stories we've spoken about today let me know your thoughts in the comment section below i'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments really enjoy interact with you guys talking about wwe aw impact wrestling new japan pro wrestling all things pro wrestling here on the channel so be sure to get involved in the community drop a comment below all opinions are welcome if you have enjoyed this video please do smash a like on the like button too it really does help us out here on youtube got the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they have haven't seen our videos previously but most importantly if you haven't already please do subscribe to wrestling news 365 you can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now or if you wait a few seconds there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch thank you very much for watching listening streaming or have you come across this video today and i'll speak for you again very very soon Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.